the news is out there already. CK Akuno, head coach of the Ghana Black Stars, he's been given the sack. I mean, literally, asked to go. And uh, so the, we all know why. It's because of the performance of the Black Stars. There are those who don't think that the coach has a grip, a firm grasp over the team. And probably that's why the team is not performing. But yeah, there are those who, who, who also have different opinions or differ when it comes to that. So we're going to spend the next few minutes to get into that conversation. There's not so much about why or where we, why we are where we are. It's more about looking forward. And to joining me for this conversation, I have Oroku um, Pofo, who I didn't, I didn't allow to go after <laughs> his, he was done with the sport. So we can have this conversation. And then we're also having... Joining us via Zoom, George Addo Jr. of Joy Sports. He's uh, chilling in the in the UK, wondering when George is going. George, when are you going to come back to Ghana? Very soon. <laughs> very soon. Yes, yeah, very very soon. Yeah. Very, very soon, soon. I think well, the, the politicians will say it's in the pipeline, or you mean? Oh, oh I mean, I mean, very very soon. I mean. Uh, not, not too long, not too okay. long. I mean, All right. a matter of days. All right, sure. Also joining us for the conversation is Sam Johnson, is a former Black Stars player. Thank you very oh, yo. much for making time to speak with us. All right, so he's not on yet, but he will be connecting in a bit. So, George, I'm going to start with you. You essentially thought that um, Tiki Akuno should go, and he's been asked, are you happy now? Yes, for the first part, um, I'm okay because I think that it works for CK Akono and it works for Ghana. Because why, do you, why do you say was, it works for CK Akono? Yeah, it works for CK Akono because, because I, 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 would, I just could not think about a way CK Akono was going to be able to stop the manipulation at the top. I did not think CK Akono was ready to handle this Black Stars team. And I say this Black Stars team because this Black Stars team has got no special players in quotes. They've got no Abedi Pele. They've got no Sigi Akono. They've got no player who can, you know, spring up some magic and win a game for you. This, this Black Stars team has got good players, but it's a team that needs good tactics. And it's a team that needs to play collectively as a team and at a level consistently before we can get something out of them. I don't think we had the, the right coach in Sikia Kona to handle this Black Stars team. So I could take you back um, to what we have seen. Anytime we get to a point like this when we have to deal with transition, we've normally had strong coaches who are able to take serious decisions, who are able to throw in youngsters, who are able to withstand the pressure that comes from the system. Um, I don't think that the pressure that comes from the system is going anytime soon. And so it meant that we needed a coach who can stand up to any Black Stars management committee member who says, put my player in. Like Milovan Ryabach told them, I don't want Suleiman Tari to be part of the World Cup squad. And he was driving him out of the place. And then they went to Berg and Suleiman Tari says, all right. I mean, Milovan Ryabach said, all right, Suleiman Tari will only play, but only to my instructions. And we saw Suleiman Tari come on and do exactly what he wanted. So Milovan Ryabach can pick a player from the Chan team and put him straight into the Africa Cup of Nations squad, and he says, I'm going with this, I'm dropping the players, I'm going. And he was sure about what he was doing. I don't think CK, you know, had gotten to that point yet. And I feel that, well, it was going to go down the lines. He needs to go and learn. And more importantly, he'll come back with uh, bigger balls and we'll be able to stand up to him because I think CK knows, he's watching us this morning, that so many things went wrong, so many things were going on he wasn't happy about, but he, he just couldn't come out to uh, talk about it. And so I think at this point, it was good that, you know, he just left the job. Because I don't even think that those who employed him believed in him based on the trajectory um, of his, the way he had the job and, and all we saw till now. So I think it works for CK Akono and it works for Ghana. It gives us a chance now after two games in the World Cup qualifiers to restart things if we have the right man and, and go in and qualify for the World Cup. All right. Thank you very much. Now we have uh, Sam Johnson also joining us, former Black Stars player. Good morning to uh, for you. For you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for making time to speak with us. So George Addo Jr. thinks that the axing of uh, Coach C.K. Akuno actually works for him. What's your, what's your position on that? Yeah, let me say hello to, uh, to everyone this morning. Uh, it's, very, it's very sad uh, this is happening, but... Uh, what am I going to say? This is what the uh, Ghanaians want. Because the beginning is uh, very poor. And, uh, 
sometimes you have to do these things so that uh, it won't be late before you realize it, it won't be late for you. So I think uh, it's the right thing to do because uh, things are not going on well. And uh, this is how it's supposed to be. So I think, I think it's okay. I'm okay with that. But, so uh, for, for you, so George, yeah. Ado Jr. actually thinks that it is good for CK Akuno himself. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think so because, it, like I said, uh, if it goes more worse than now, which nobody knows what is hap what is coming in future for him, so it's better now that uh, than than uh, later because um, me my only only problem is that uh, how how uh, is only CK and his assistant or all the technical team is is going out. Yeah. No, it's I'm, I'm CK and his assistants. But the, the uh, technical director is still there. The white man is still there. Okay, let me just get that from uh, Uriel Kampoff, who is with me in the studio. So I know it's CK and two. Yeah, David Duncan and uh, Patrick Gravers, who just came in a couple of uh, months. I think May 31st. So those are the only three going at this point. The technical director. The technical white Technical director, man. Bernard Lippe, he stays for now. Okay, so the technical director is staying... Um, <laughs> For you? Yeah. Me, that is where, where I'm also having a problem with that. Okay. Because I'm having a problem with that. If we have a technical director, okay, as a white person, the technical director, who can bring a third division player from outside coming to play our national team, why we have a premiership here, that we have premier, premier players here, and third division person can come and play our national team. So that, that means the person don't regard what we are doing here. All right. And I don't see that person as a, as, a, as a person who's supposed to be a technical director for our national team. So you think that the technical director too should if also... CK is going, CK is supposed to go with the technical director because the technical director is also included. Recruiting and everything, the technical director is there. So if CK is going and the technical director is there, I don't see why the technical, technical director is supposed to be there. Me, personally, I don't see that. All right. Whatever CK is doing, he will report to the technical director. And the technical director will also give him the advice. So what kind of advice is giving him? I don't have a problem CK is going because things are not going on well. Fine. But who is the head of that department? So if CK is going, we always you know, use one person to see that person is there. Yeah. As a, for, for, for you... The person away. For you, you have been a, a, a Black Stars player yourself. Uh, are you in touch with the, the current crop of players and do you know what sentiments um, they are sharing right now? No. All no. Right. No. That is, that, that, that is true. No. But what I'm saying is that the technical director is there. What is his job? Because now we went there and then we see CK as, okay, the team is not performing, right? That's why we are sending him off. So what is what, what, what is the what is the what is the real thing that is there that maybe why the team is not performing? Yeah. Are we also thinking about those things? Let, let me ask let me ask uh, George. George, do you think that uh, the technical coach should also go? The technical yeah, director. For, yeah, yeah, for two reasons. Reason one, because the. Ghana Football Association president, in an interview with Guy Al Smith, my colleague on Joy FM and Joy News, did indicate that, for instance, the selection of players was obviously going to go through a certain process, which had um, members of a committee vetting Coach Siki Akona's selection. I mean, any player that he wanted to invite to the Black Stars had to go through a committee. We have said that player selection was one of the reasons that the team is not gelling the way they're supposed to gel. Uriku has all the numbers on what we have done in six call-ups in 10 matches. We were 75 players from Coach Siki Akono. It was not just Coach Siki Akono because Ket Ukraku, the FA president, said that he had a committee or he had a process that the list had to go through. So at the end of it, in terms of a selection of players that was coming through, definitely, Ben Ali Pei, the technical director, must own a bit of the, of, the, of the blame here. We must blame him. He must take a bit of responsibility. Now, that 
audio that was the, let me say the, the the exclusive audio that we got that we put in the system from Braden Menu. That audio from the boy, the young man who plays for Dumpster. He said the first call that came to him was from Ben Ali Bay before CK Akono called. And uh, before, you know, Alexa Santi asked him that he should get a passport and come and join the Black Stars, of which he didn't even believe that he deserved the call up. That first call was made by Ben Ali Pei. So if I had Ben Ali Pei today on the show, I'll ask him, Ben Ali Pei, why did you call Brayden Maynard? Because the guy says he does not even believe that he's there. He has done only um, 68 minutes in the, in the season or 70, 73 minutes in the season. He had just played one cup game, 15 minutes. How did he get into the Black Stars? And that's the question that we need to ask Bernard Lipe. And that's why yeah. a lot of people yeah. feel that Bernard Lipe is part of the mess. You can't sack Siki Apono and, uh, you know, Duncan and, and all, the, all the assistant coaches and leave Bernard Lipe there. Because remember, we have to make sure that this exercise does not end with us going back to it again. So if people have erred in their job, and because you have a technical director, man, or handed or handled by a technical director in Ben Ali Pei, he is aware of every selection that Coach Siki Akona did pair with the Ghana Football Association president said. So why have we left Ben Ali Pei out of this? That's the big question. Yeah. Because if you have kept Ben Ali Pei there, hmm. he will still call a lot of the Braden Menus when the new coach comes. Okay. And that's why when okay. we get to which kind of coach, I, I will talk to you. Because if we get the right kind of coach, um, um, Israel, if we get the right kind of coach, the first thing you would know or the first thing you hear about is a serious bust up between him and the technical director if he's not fat. All right. Uh, Uriel Kampofo, yeah. this technical director, you also think he should go? Well, you ask yourself why he was appointed in the first place. And it takes me back to, you know, the interviews that were granted and uh, what was released to the media in terms of the reason he was appointed. Now, he said that he was in and it was going to take some time, but he's drawn a pathway on how to get Ghana football to grow in a certain direction and to get an identity for Ghana football. And he said that this would take, you know, investment in the uh, lower divisions, Colts football and youth football and all that. So steps had already been taken and there were even plans to tour around Ghana. So per the information we received, Bernard Lepe came in to actually put down a blueprint of how Ghana is supposed to play. Right. When you look at teams across Europe, you know what they stand for, you know what type of football they play. So after one year, if things are not going well, you look at how CK O'Connor is playing, and we still cannot tell how the team plays. The team is struggling to create chances. Certainly, the burden cannot be on CK alone, because you, you said that Bernard Lepe was supposed to bring a blueprint of how we're supposed to play. So if you're not able to see how Ghana is playing after his time in charge, then of course he has to be of, 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 of questions as well. Could but it be that we have the blueprint, mm. but it has not been implemented? So he may have delivered on the blueprint, mm. but we are not implementing that. Yet. Well, there were rumors also going around that uh, he wasn't, there, there was a bit of tension between him and CK Akono. And you know, he actually provided a technical report for the South African game, one that, you know, the technical team do believe that if CK Akono followed, there was no way the team was going to lose. At least they would have got a draw. And it looks as if CK did not follow, you know, the technical instructions given to him. So it's difficult to weigh in because there are t tensions, even between CK and David Duncan, they had their own issues. Right. So it's difficult to weigh in on what exactly went on in the camp. But what we do know, or what we are hearing is that CK Akono wasn't always taking technical direction from him, especially in game where he can fully control things. You know, when it comes to player call ups, you can call a player. But when it comes to the match, you can tell him to play this guy on the left wing. When he goes, CK can change that. So there was some disparity in, in, in terms of how they see the game and how they interpret it. Which then brings me to the question of what really do we want to achieve with this Black Stars? And are we sure? that everyone is on the same page, you know, including all stakeholders from the technical team, the coach, the players, the fans. We keep on telling ourselves we want to win the Africa Cup of Nations, we want to get to the semi-final. Trust me, no team does that by just saying it. This is a, a low moment for Ghana football. We need to be real with ourselves and then understand how we can build again in two, three years. Yeah. I think it's a lazy approach to just say that we're going to win the Africa Cup of Nations, we're going to make the semi-finals of the World Cup and then just sit there and expect things to happen. 
How are we going to do that? So Sam Johnson actually mentioned something, which, and he was saying that he didn't see why the technical director who was brought in, and uh, he would go and call up with someone from the third division side when there were people, players in the Premier League, the Ghana Premier League, who you could have called upon. He says for him, it, it suggests that he doesn't believe in the Ghana Premier League. But you're also talking about the fact that we had, he was supposed to come up with a blueprint where we're going to develop or you know get players right going through the ranks from Colts all, all the way. Is that the way forward? Do you believe that that's the way we should go? Yeah, I, I think that's the way forward because what's going to happen now is that the management committee or the committee set up to appoint a new coach in 72 hours would most likely pick a coach who's available not necessarily a coach who fits what Ghana needs. All right. And the question is, what does Ghana need? We don't know. What style of football does Ghana want to play? <laughs> Do we want to play quick passing football? Are we calling such players? You, you, you look at the recent call-ups, and he called Hart to folk right back Fatau. Was Fatau called because Hart to folk won the league or because he's, he's the best you know, right back in the Premier League? Now, here's the trick. Fatau is a fullback who loves to go for it. Defensively, he's not the best. So if you knew you are going to spend majority of the game defending against South Africa, why would you take a fullback who loves to attack and not right. defend? So it looks as if we're not on the same page and we need to understand what we want and then call players based on the style of football that you want to play. That's the only way you can get the best out of your players. George Ado Jr., what's the way forward? Now, the only way is to get a man who knows what he can do for Ghana. Bernard Lipe, I can say, did not know what he could do for Ghana. And uh, I'll be dropping a video of him in his initial interview when the Black Stars played against Mali in Turkey, where he honestly spoke to Patrick Osiagema in Songo and said, I'm here to learn about the system. I'm here to go through it and I'll decide what to do next. That was his first interview. And after that, there was an arranged interview by the Ghana Football Association to polish things up. I think it's time to bring that interview back. He did not know what he was about. Milovan Rajvac knew what he was about in 2009. So the Chan team played in a certain way, went to the finals of the Chan. He, he joined Selastete, 2009 FIFA Under 20 World Cup. We won it. The AFCON in 2010, he was bold enough to call some of these boys that he has seen playing. We were second with a young team. He was a, he was, he was a one man against the whole of Ghana. When we said, why are you taking these young boys to the Africa Cup of Nations? He said, I know what I'm doing. Andrea, you was part of that team. They went to the Africa Cup of Nations, and then they were second. Then he took them to the World Cup. In the World Cup, he was bold enough to call a player like Lee Adi, who was, who was a local player. Lee Adi walked into the Black Stars and felt comfortable and played well in the World Cup. And in the World Cup, we were one kick away from the semifinals. That is a man who knows what he was about. And it was good work done by a number of coaches. Ratome Chukove from Clarewa, who thought that Andre Ayu was good enough to get into the Black Stars team. When everybody said, why are you putting Andre Ayu in the Black Stars team? Is it because his father played? Is it because somebody played? He said, look, guys, I know what I've seen in Andre Ayu. I did the same for Samoleto. He did well. I am doing the same. Andre Ayu down the line today. He's the captain of the Black Stars. We need a man who understands what he wants to do for Ghana and will take it irrespective of the... I mean, the kind of challenges that come in terms of disagreements with the top brass of football. Now, it's important that Ket Okraku, Prosper Harrison Ado, we have got a very, very complicated and let me say sophisticated Ghana Football Association leadership who have an idea of one, the ins and outs of football. They have had one or two stints with, you know, football agencies. They have managed players and everything. So they are going to be a difficult bunch to deal with. So if you step in this Black Stars team as a Black Stars coach and you cannot go head to head with them when you have decided on the way to go, you have a big problem. That is CK Akono's problem. Today, if CK Akono grants an interview, we'll hear things and there are more things that haven't come up. But it's important that the system is able to raise a man who can stand against it. If you yeah. can't do that, let's all forget it. And okay. I have told you the way the FA is now. So you have to be very, very sophisticated and you have to go head to head. We've got Black Stars coaches who said, like, you will not play the World Cup walkout. They have, we have got coaches who have to take a decision between Sami Ejayi, who was doing well in the Ghana Premier League, and Ole Kingston, and they took a decision. So 
the man must say, I will take a decision and my gladness on it. I want this young man to go in. Fatal Mohammed goes into um, the Black Star squad. And then when he comes back, he says, I was not even feeling comfortable. The stadium scared me. Anthony Annan walked into a 2006, uh, you know, Black Stars, a 2008 World Cup, 2008 Afcon team. We saw Shere Yasu, another Ghana Premier League player from K5 South to Kotoko, walk into a Black Star squad. Shere Yasu replaced Sami Kufo. Sami. <laughs> Sami Kufo was uh, Bayern Munich. He had played a Champions League, blah, blah, blah. Shiga has to replace him in the World Cup. So we have got a lot of things wrong. Our under 17, under 20, under 23 have to be properly synchronized. All right. The last right. time we had one man directing all of that was Milovan Rajevac. And that's why we have benefited till today. The players in the Black Stars have been, I mean, the key players, we started using them maybe from the 2009, the 2008, thereabouts. And now all those players, have moved out of main leagues into the Asian leagues. Yeah. Clearly telling yeah. you yeah. where we are going yeah. at the moment. Okay. If we don't have a right man okay. to change anything, we are going nowhere. All right. Uh, for you, I'd want to also ask you, do you think that we can get a local replacement for CK Akono or would have to look outside? Yeah, we can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can get something from here. We can get something. I think there is a lot of uh, my colleagues and also the old I me, mean, which is some of them are still around. What are, what are but, some? Who are some of the but, people you'd like to mention? But, but no, dude, I, I don't want to mention names. <laughs> but you people know better than I do. And and what I'm what I'm trying to say is that my my brothers have said a lot of uh, things. Some of them are, are are very right. But me personally, I also want to say me personally because it's me say, talking now. Yeah. Um, there are so uh, there are certain things in the in the national team. Every, every time people are saying that uh, when the white man comes, the white man can do whatever he wants to do. But why the black man can do whatever he wants to do? When it comes to calling the player, I know the players that will be okay for what I want to do for Ghana. That if I do this, if I play, no, Ghana is always going to be for for two nations. And that is what we've been playing since. 4 3 3, uh, uh, or 4 2, whatever. We play, we start, our style of play is 4 2 2, uh, uh, 4 4 2. And that is what we have to, I mean, do everything on. In Ghana here, all the things, almost 70 or 80 percent, play 4 4, uh, 4 4 2. All right. So if we want to do something, we, we have to build on. What we know already, okay. the polish it because that is what is going down. All the cups that we want from from Adam. All right. It's the same four four two. We play all the cups, including the World Cup or whatever. It's the same four four two. So why don't we build on that? We, we specialize on that one because that is what we are. So it's, so it's going to be very easy for us to I mean, upgrade it. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Sam Johnson, former yeah. Black Stars player, uh, for you, for making time to speak with us. And uh, to you as well, George Ado Jr., who joined us from London. And we're expecting you back in town very, very soon. You take care. There's any uh, Ghanaian coach, uh, you know, here on the scene who can do this job. So uh, we have to look out for it. All right. Thank you very and much. We have to stop the Ghana beyond age. The Ghana beyond age <laughs> for the Black Stars doesn't work. Because you have... Uh, <laughs> top stars and you have to look for top coaches so Ghana beyond it uh, the president says that well I want to uh, what, I want a Ghana what, what coach name what names no? what names would you suggest I've, I've, I've seen the Utuado bit um, he's currently the assistant manager Borussia Dortmund he's gone through the ranks I've heard about Ibrahim Tanko um, who has also gone through the ranks he has a bit of national team feel black stars and Cameroon I've heard about George Watting who is currently handling the under 23 of uh, Aston Villa. Uh, these are fine, fine, fine guys, right. but I, I, I still don't believe they're, they'll be strong enough to face the FA. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, uh, George Addo Jr. And uh, back in the studio, uh, Oreku. So, what do you think? Do you think we can get um, a local replacement for CK Akono? We'll have to look outside. I think we have to look outside uh, that be because of you know the points that George summarized. Uh, when you become coach of the Black Stars. It's not just about the job alone. There are, there are extra and you know political forces that you'd have to fight, and I don't think there's anyone capable on the local scene to do that at the moment. Because 
of how we view local coaches. It's almost as if they're seen as you are giving them a favor. You right. don't expect a job. And so you are even overwhelmed. So your body language alone allows them to take advantage of you. That's so not the same we, way. So if we are to look outside, are we to look at Ghanaians who are into coaching outside? Like uh, um, George was indicating, yeah. you mentioned uh, George Boateng. Yeah, and then Otoado. Yeah, I, th I think th those are really good guys. And they, they know their stuff. They've, they've uh, you know, reoriented how they think. And I don't think they're going, you know, you're going to pick someone working at Dortmund and you, he would in any way think that you giving him a Black Stars job is a favor. It's a favor. Because I think he's really comfortable. They're working with some of the best talents in the world. And so by virtue of that alone, you do know that at least you have very talented coaches out there who, you know, the way they think. Yeah. Is different from how the local coaches do. I think by virtue of that, that is a better, you know, probably an upgrade. And even their, their coaching education alone, what they've been previewed to, is right. way more than our coaches here have seen. So I think it's, it's, it's high time that we admit that we are going down. And the only way we can come back, as our history suggests, is when a foreign coach comes in. So I think that's the only logical way to go right now. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Rick Wampofo, who is with here. Here's here at uh, Joy Sports, and that'll be all for the conversation. But I'm sure that this conversation is going to continue in your homes, and uh, we're going to be asking whether we should have a, a local coach or a foreign coach. If we're getting a foreign coach, we get a Ghanaian foreign coach. But that conversation is going to continue.